I don't recall in the history of my channel something getting so many video requests for one topic. So many of you have asked where my storage boxes are from, how did I customize and make them, and if you could do something like this to your room as well. So I'm here to answer all your questions, and the best part is you can customize your kitchen, storage rooms, garages, shelves using this method, and it's not just for the craft room. Now in order to actually customize the boxes, you're gonna need some sort of electronic die cutting machine, a Cricut, a Silhouette, Brother Scan and Cut, whatever. I think you could do it with metal dies too, but that would be extremely tedious. So all you need to do is create yourself a text box and type in what you want on your box. And you are going to just choose a font that you love. I downloaded one off of Etsy that was close to the Ray Dunn font because I really love that look. Now before we get into anything else, you're going to want to measure the width and the height of your box. Obviously you don't want your label to be cut bigger than it actually needs to be or be super minute on the box. I like to go for a little bit of a bigger bold look on mine. So I made sure that my height and my width there fit the parameters of my box, obviously a little bit smaller, made sure my machine was set to cut and then hit the make it button. It was as easy as that. If you're going to do multiple labels at a time, obviously you're just going to create some multiple text box boxes and you can cut everything out at once. In total, I think my project of labeling all my boxes took about two hours. You're going to set your base material here to vinyl and just a quick note I'm using non-permanent vinyl for mine because in case I ever want to change up my boxes I can just scrape it off and continue but permanent vinyl is available as well. So I'm adding my vinyl color side up to my mat. There's no need to mirror image anything at all and just make sure that it's obviously large enough for your project. Try to get it as smooth as possible without too many bubbles um, but a few of them there won't affect too much. And I'm going to put it into my machine now, hit the flashing button. As I said, you can't go wrong with Cricut. It is so easy to use. And then you're going to hit the flashing Cricut button when it's all ready. So those of you afraid to use your electronic die cutting machine, get them out of the box. They're not too difficult. There's two buttons. You can't mess it up. It will get started cutting and then you are free for a little while. All right, so now I can eject it from my machine. It's flashing and ready to go, and I'm going to remove it from my Cricut mat. It is different than paper. It's not going to stay on your mat, and it didn't cut through the back. There's a reason for that. You'll see as well, your back of your vinyl is labeled if you have the Cricut brand, so that's really handy too. If you're looking for permanent or non-permanent, it tells you right there. The next thing you're going to do is cut out just around the letters as close as possible. The closer you get, the easier it will be to weed it. Okay, so taking my weeding tool, you can use any sort of craft pick for this. If you're not into using vinyl a lot, don't go buy an extra tool. You're just gonna work it along, kind of getting through the edges there, and you're peeling out the negative space. Some letters are gonna be easier and go quicker than others. And depending on the fine amount of detail, you may need to give it a little help along the way, especially you could see the E here and the way I was pulling it. It just needed a little extra help. But overall, it doesn't take too long and it's pretty easy. It's also something you get really quick at with practice. Don't forget to remove those little centers of your letters as well and then you are going to grab some transfer tape. So whether you have the Cricut brand or some no-name brand it doesn't particularly matter. Just remember that you can reuse this piece of transfer tape as many times as you like until it's no longer sticky. I ended up doing all of my labels with just two pieces of transfer tape approximately this size and that worked really well. So don't go and think you have to use an entire roll of transfer tape. Transfer tape helps you obviously transfer your image onto its surface. So I'm going to place it on top of the letters and I'm going to burnish it with a scraper. You can use a kitchen scraper, your Tim Holtz scraper or a Cricut scraper, it doesn't really matter. One thing that is super important is that you clean the surface that the vinyl is going to be on. Any sort of dust or debris is going to affect the stickiness of the vinyl. I've had my vinyl on my boxes for well over six months and I have to say I haven't had any issues even if it is non-permanent. They're stuck on there and I don't see them coming off anytime soon. So I peeled off the back of the transfer tape, that white piece, and now you can use your grid lines in order to line up your text. I obviously used white and beige, but since I didn't have any for the example, I decided to use gold for my text, just to kind of show you the gist of how I created my labels. Now once you're certain, then you can burnish and you can scrape that on there. Um, up until then, you can peel it back pretty easily. 
um, and it's not really an issue. If it gets stuck somewhere or it's crooked, you can lift it up. Then you're going to peel close to the surface. I like to really keep my finger, see, I wasn't close to the surface there. And so when you really go close to the surface using your thumb there and two hands, then it really just peels back nicely and it's super easy. Now lastly, a word about the boxes. I perused my local stationery shop one day and found the company Semicolon. I bought a whole bunch of boxes right away. I fell in love with them. Love the fact that they're not plastic. I love the modern design of them. I love the way they look. They are super sturdy. And they are available in several countries in online shops. So I will link to them below in the video description and I have a coupon code for you as well if you are interested. Although I do have to say these boxes are a little on the expensive side, but don't worry. If you want to customize your own craft room like I did, check out the dollar store. Check what you already have around the house. There are beautiful boxes everywhere. Have fun customizing and enjoy your crafty organization space. If you're interested in more craft tutorials and videos, be sure to check out my playlist here and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye for now.